Hey guys, Bella Luna here. So, today, or tonight, because it's actually like almost 11, but you know, can't sleep, so what the hell, let's do a video. Okay, so what I want to go over with you this time are some little pointers for what I like to call subtle witchery or um, witchcraft for those that are maybe in the broom closet or just, you know, want to keep everything just kind of subtle. You know, maybe if you're, you know, going to work or, or whatnot and you want to do stuff, but obviously you don't want to lay out like, you know, a whole altar in the middle of the office. So first thing I want to talk about is um, actually stuff that Many of you have probably already heard about, you know, you see a lot on a lot of different videos, so I'll just get those out of the way. Um, there's meditation that you can do, you know, all kinds of people do meditation um, that's not specific to witchcraft. So if you meditate, people are not going to think weirdly of you. They're just going to think you're super spiritual, uh, super spiritual, excuse me or um, or something else, but they're not gonna go straight to witch. If they do, well, that's kinda cool, but whatever. Um, so there's meditation. There's also taking cleansing baths. Um, and even if you don't have, you know, any fancy mixes or anything like that, any, any fancy um, baths, uh, you can actually just take like a little pouch, put some Epsom salt, um, and some choice herbs for, um, cleansing, for, uh, purification, and you can put that in the bathtub with you. If you don't have a bathtub, just hang, hang it on your shower head, and, um, that'll work too. So, um, so that's something simple. And obviously, unless you have somebody in the bathroom with you, they're not going to see what you're doing. So that's an option. Um, another one is, um, also energy man manipulation. You can practice energy manipulation when you're in your room by yourself, um, in the bathroom or whatnot that takes nothing but your hands and yourself. And so that's definitely something that you can do on your own and, um, and practice. Um, another one is not magic. So many of you have heard about not magic. For those of you that haven't, it literally is, sometimes it's referred to as cord magic. And it literally is tying knots, uh, on a, on a string or a ribbon. And as you tie the knot, you are thinking about your intention, your, your purpose for your spell work. And, uh, people do it differently. You know, I'm going to tell you, you, you've heard me say this several times, you know, you do what feels right for you. Some people use a total of 10 knots. Some people do it in increments of three. Um, so three, six, nine knots, you know, what have you, whatever you think is, um, is preferable. Me personally, um, for me, it depends what I'm doing, but for each knot, I like to do three knots per knot, if that makes sense. Um, because to me, it kind of, it really seals, seals in the intention with each knot and with each step. So, those are kind of like the basic ones that I think a lot of people talk about. So the other ones that I'm going to talk about, um, probably, you know, they've been, I, I know that they've been talk, talked about before in other videos you may have seen, but um, they may not be as common, hopefully. So let's look at my notes here. Okay, so the first one. Um, so... Marking symbols on yourself. It could be uh, a symbol that um, that you are aware of that you made yourself, um, that you've seen in a book, um, like a stave, an Icelandic stave. Uh, it could be a sigil that you made. It could be a rune or a bind rune that you created. Um, but you can draw it on yourself. And when I say draw it on yourself, I don't mean uh, draw it with a pen or draw it with a marker that somebody can see. It doesn't need to be seen. 
It just needs to be known by you that you did it. So um, I've actually done this myself uh, before I go to work. If I'm working on a spell and I am trying to manifest something and I'm and I've used a particular symbol or rune or whatnot in that spell work, then I will take a spell oil. Um, or you don't even need to use a spell oil. You can just use your finger and just draw it on a part of your body. Just the fact that you just just the fact that you made that action, um, you're carrying that with you. So that is something that nobody will be able to see. Nobody will be able to tell uh, except for you. You know that you did it. So that's one option. Uh, the next one is weather magic. So weather magic is pretty much what it sounds like. You are doing magical workings with the help of the weather and based on the weather. So if you do some research into the different aspects and correspondences of thunderstorms versus snow uh, versus a windy day uh, versus hail, uh, you can do things with those energies. So um, I actually want to tell you a little bit about what you how you can actually mix that up with cord magic with your with your um, knot magic. So let's say, well, first of all, let's back up and say, so when you are harnessing weather magic, you want to expose yourself to that weather. Now, obviously, if it's like a blizzard outside, you're going to want to, you know, do so safely. But, um, but it could be something as simple as just opening a door or opening a window to expose yourself more, more concretely with that weather. So, um, let's say you are wanting, wanting to harness, uh, thunderstorm energy, which is powerful. Sometimes it's angry. Um, you know, you think about what a thunderstorm feels like to you. And, um, and if you wanted to put that energy in, say, a knot spell, then you visualize not only your, intention your goal in your petition but you visualize the energy of the thunder and the wind and 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 the rain and the heavy rain and the thunderstorm going into each knot as you tie your knots so that is a really easy way to um, incorporate uh, weather into a knot spell. Uh, if you're not using a knot spell, it's kind of the same concept. Whatever you're wanting to imbue that energy with, you visualize that energy of that thunderstorm or whatever the weather, that weather component is into, you know, your talisman, um, whatever, whatever magic your petition, whatever you're trying to do. So that is, another thing that you can do because obviously nobody's going to notice that it's not like they're going to see you you know holding a thunderbolt in your hand how cool would that be though but that's not going to happen okay the next thing is glamour magic so glamour magic is another thing that sounds pretty much just what it sounds like right so, um, obviously glamour magic is something that you would do for pretty much, um, appearances, things to do with your appearances. So, um, for women and people, not just women, I shouldn't say just women, uh, but for people who wear makeup, this is really, really easy because, um, you just take one, one of your, um, one of your makeups, it's not really a word, but you know what I mean. You know, take your lipstick um, or take your eyeliner and um, charge it. You know, turn that into a magical instrument. Um, perhaps you want uh, confidence, self-confidence. And so every time you put on your lipstick, you'll imbue self-confidence in you. Again, very unnoticeable other than the color of your lipstick. Uh, but nobody will have any idea that you have uh, that you have charmed your your lipstick. 
And so um, that's definitely um, glamour magic is a way to do that. If you don't wear if you don't wear makeup, you can do the same thing with lotion or um, something something that you put a chapstick. Um, so as you put that on you, uh, as you put the lotion on you, um, you have charged it with whatever intent that was. And again, very much on the down low. Nobody's not going to know what you're doing other than gussying yourself up. Okay. Next thing, go to my list here. Next thing is color magic. So color magic is also something that you could incorporate without anybody even realizing what you're doing. And the easiest way to do that is just when you get up and get dressed in the morning. So if you are going to go for an interview and you are wanting to dress for success, you know, then you think of colors that make you feel powerful, make you feel confident. Um, or um, if you are going to do something that, you know, you're hoping to invest or make money, be prosperous, you know, then you'll incorporate the colors that you associate with that. Notice I am not telling you the colors specifically, and that's because I'm a firm believer that you don't just go by, you know, these generic lists. You go by what, what it means to you, okay? So um, get the concept down and then think about what these different colors mean to you and incorporate that in your everyday getting ready. But it doesn't have to be just in your clothes too. It could be in the color pen or writing utensil that you use. Um, it could be in the color paper that you use to write on. But think about in your everyday actions, what color, if you have the option to use a particular color, think about incorporating that into, into your everyday being, living, um, to help manifest your intentions. Okay. Next on the list is cleansing sprays. Okay. So cleansing sprays are um, a great option for people, especially who cannot burn incense for whatever reason, whether it be an allergic reason or, you know, family doesn't want that, uh, roommates don't want it. You can use a cleansing spray. Cleansing sprays, um, you can certainly purchase cleansing sprays. Uh, lots, lots of people sell them. I sell them at my shop. Um, I think, uh, actually Mountain Gypsy sells them at, at her shop. Um, you can purchase them anywhere, but you can also make your own too. And basically it, you are using what you want to use is you want to use something that's going to help preserve it. And so usually that will be vodka, um, and water and preferably moon water or some sort of charged holy water. Um, and if you are young and you cannot get a hold of vodka, you can use isopropyl alcohol. You'll want to get it as um, high in content as possible of, of alcohol. 90% is best, um, but you know, you get what you can. Um, but, uh, it's about a half and half mix. And then you put in the herbs for cleansing or for protection or for purification or whatnot. And instead of, as you would with the incense and the smoke cleansing, you're just going to spray it. And people use spray, uh, spray bottles for all kinds of stuff. You know, just as long as you don't mark it, magical cleansing spray, um, as long as you, you know, keep it in an unmarked bottle or something, you know, that, that's not very obvious, um, you can carry it around with you and, and spray it on you as you need. So next on the list is, oh, kitchen witchery. Okay, kitchen witchery. So 
I'm not going to go into this in great detail uh, because, you know, that's something that we can talk about in a whole episode on its own. But um, if you're not familiar with kitchen witchery, it literally is just using your magic in um, your preparation of your meals, of the food that you cook. And so basically when you think about um, how something is activated, charged and activated, the consumption of it is the activation of that spell work. So something really super easy, like for instance, if you're a big fan of beans and rice, um, if you make a beans and rice dish, both of those things, rice and beans, are really great for prosperity work. So next time you make a pot of beans and rice, you focus, visualize, and imbue that, uh, that intention and those energies of um, being prosperous and growing your prosperity. And as you consume that, you're activating that spell just from a simple beans and rice. So, but um, every food, just like every herb, just like everything on this earth carries its own uh, magical correspondences. So just, just do your research, look that up and make yourself a meal. So, okay, next, are charms and talismans. So you do not need a fancy piece of jewelry. I mean, you know, I've got this, that's great, but you know what? Dig through your jewelry box, look through, look for, I don't know, an old butterfly or whatever. Um, it doesn't have to look like a cool magical occult symbol. It can be anything that you can um, charge and imbue with whatever your intention is. You want something as like a, um, a ward that you can uh, wear, a protection ward, um, or uh, again, something for prosperity or whatever your intention is. Um, you know, just take a piece of inconspicuous, inconspicuous, inconspicuous that one of those were one of those um you want to get uh something that is not going to cause a lot of attention of course and um and you charge it up with whatever intention that you like wear that and voila you are wearing magic okay next on the list okay these are fun these are fun okay so this is cardomancy and bibliomancy and Stichomancy, that's S-T-I-C-H-O-M-A-N-C-Y. I hope I spelled that right, but you'll see that at the bottom of the screen. So cardomancy is basically divining with just a regular def deck of cards, not a tarot deck, just a regular playing deck of cards. So people use a deck of cards um, differently. So you can do some research to see what feels right for you, or you can just kind of create your own. Um, there are some actual definitions of what the cards mean. So if I remember correctly, um, the numbers represent different types of events in your life. The face cards, like the Jack, the Queen, represent people in your life. Um, Hearts, a heart card, represents um, love matters. Diamonds represent financial matters or, or matters of prosperity. Um, clubs represent something positive happening in your life, and spades represent uh, something negative or some, you know, some sort of turmoil in your life. And again, so you you use those different combinations between the suit, uh, face, or number. And, uh, and you can have, um, a possible divination and it'll just look like you're playing solitaire. So, um, stickomancy means, um, divining with lines or divining by lines, something like that. And that is, um, by taking any book, 
uh, and um, just randomly opening up and um, and divining based on either a passage or a word. Um, or you can go through and uh, randomly, you know, decide to, I'm going to go through, you know, five or seven patient pages and randomly choose words and then put those words together and see if it, it forms um, some sort of sentence. Um, that is, uh, some people find that when they do the words, the separate words, that it's a little bit more effect effective than just doing a random passage, because sometimes the whole passage, especially in just a random old book, um, may really not mean anything and that there's probably more meaning with the words, but you, you play around with that. Now, a form of stichomancy is bibliomancy. Bibliomancy, some people think, uh, assume that that's divining with the use of the Bible. And that's not necessarily the case. What it is, is it's, it's divination with the use of a holy book or what's considered to be a holy book. So, um, you think of any of the religions out there or any, or any books that, that you would consider as a holy book. So the Quran, um, or, or something like that. Um, uh, the, what, what is that? Um, uh, oh, Pearl of Great Pies. If you're Mormon, then it's weird that you're watching this, but still, you'll know what that book is or the Book of Mormon, you know, any kind of, um, book that's, uh, considered a holy book. You would open it up, um, pick a random passage and then think about what that passage could possibly mean to um, to your divining. So, again, those are um, those are things that you can do with items that won't raise an eyebrow: a Bible, a holy book, a regular book, a deck of cards, um, and you can do some divining. So, okay. Um, ah, next on the list is water, just plain old water sort of plain old water. So, um, so there's a couple of things. The obvious ones are of course, making moon water, lunar energies or sun water, solar energies. So, uh, I obviously don't have to go through that. Um, but you can also make them in a way that you can consume them so that you can carry them around with you. So, um, so, and nobody will know any better that you are drinking moon water as opposed to regular water. But there's also some spell work that you can do with water. And um, an easy one is um, like what I call, I don't think I'm the only one that calls it, but I refer to it as the water glass spell. And it, it it's really easy. You take a Take it just a regular glass, fill it with water, and and your spell could basically be centered around um, that as the water evaporates, your spell will manifest. So don't do like a 64 ounce cup because it's going to take you forever. Uh, but you know, get a, just a regular sized glass and um, it, you know, uh, unless you have really really picky parents of leaving glasses around with water, you know, that might be a problem, but otherwise, you know, leaving a glass of water in your room, just kind of hanging out there, um, usually won't cause a lot of suspicion. Um, but something as simple as that, as it is activating and manifesting as the water evaporates is uh, a way to perform magic with just a glass of water. And the last thing on the list, which you're not seeing a list, but I have a list. The last thing on my list um, is thought forms or servitors. So that one I definitely 
can do a whole freaking other episode on it. But I'm and I, so I'm not going to go into it totally in depth. If that's something that you're interested in, um, I recommend that you research it. Or if you really want to hear about it and have an, a whole episode dedicated to, uh, dedicated to it, then please leave a comment below. Let me know, and um, and I'll be glad to. But in essence, what thought forms are is it's basically um, an energy, a being, a being of energy that you create, kind of just like what the word says, a thought form. You form, you form this being out of your thought. Or in chaos magic, it's known as a servitor. Um, and these beings are there to help you either manifest for a, a specific intention, or perhaps you have them there for a, spe a specific uh, purpose that you need them around for a while. It does take a little bit to create one. Um, there's a lot of thought that goes into it because you need to think about, you know, what do you want this person, this, this being to do for you? How are they going to eat, so to speak? Um, how long are they going to be around? Uh, what's going to happen to them when, um, when they are done with their purpose? Where are they going to reside? What do they look like? Um, there's a lot that goes into this because obviously you really want to create something that you truly believe is there. And so it's not something that you're just going to decide, you know, in two seconds, you know, to say that, um, you know, I'm going to create Harry and poof, there's Harry. So, um, so there is, you know, a little bit more uh, in-depth work to it, but a thought form and a servitor is a very potentially powerful piece of magic that is, is completely invisible. It has, I mean, there's, you can have your servitor with you every day in school and nobody will be the wiser. So, um, so something to think about, definitely something to research because like I said, it's not something that, you know, you just do on a whim. Um, and again, if you want me to do a separate video on that, just leave a comment below, but that's all I got for you. And that took me way longer than I thought it was going to take, but hopefully I gave you guys some ideas. So, um, don't forget to still catch our podcast. You can find us on Anchor, Spotify, um, and pretty much any major podcast platform. And don't forget to like and subscribe, share the love, tell everybody about us, and we'll see you guys later.